Hallelujah. Y'all keep uh, Pastor and Sister Barbara in prayer. That they enjoy their time away from our smiling faces. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's Miss Portia. She did show up. Birthday girls in the house. Yeah. Hallelujah. The yeah. Walkers had the birthdays right around the first of May there. There's my glasses. The theme this month is the Holy Spirit. It was in your book and I didn't mention it because that's what I'm going to teach on. And the pastor called me a couple of weeks ago and confirmed that I would do this. That's the immediate what the what the Spirit told me he wanted me to share with you this morning is the Holy Spirit. And uh, I have taught him the Holy Spirit from a, from a teacher's perspective in lots of Bible schools and different things. And if I were to go into the depth of the study that we really need to understand and know the Holy Spirit, we can just go on until Jesus comes. Amen. But it's almost that way in every aspect of the Word of God. It's as deep as you think you are now, there is much deeper stuff to go into Amen. and to learn. But because every church is composed of mature people, of adolescent people, of immature people, of all kinds, because we have different spiritual developments in our lives, we need to reteach some things that some of you older people have already heard and know. But it does you good because faith for these things comes by hearing and hearing Amen. the Word of God. Amen. For those Amen. that are growing and have questions, and how many of you know uh, teenagers and young folks have a lot of questions? Amen. And, and, and it's good. You have not because you ask not. That's right. Amen. And for you babies that may not have a full understanding, and I, I don't know anybody in this condition, so this is not for anybody, but the Bible says if you'll just drink the milk of the Word, you'll grow. Glory. And one of the things that God's looking for is growth in all of his children. Amen. Now, for, I guess, 50 years, I spent in good exercise program, and I grew up, I was about six, three and a half. From then on, the exercise diminished, and I quit growing up and started growing out. So, <laughs> I look around, I know that's pretty much the case. But God wants us growing from the inside and the outside. Amen. So this morning... Our uh, subject is going to be on the Holy Spirit, and uh, I have uh, titled this thing Holy Spirit 101 uh, because I went back and dug out a lot of my notes and books and things that I had read through, and that's why I was saying I have so much uh, information. Uh, probably we'll be going into this. Pastor's been ministering on the Holy Spirit on the previous two Wednesday nights, and he'll continue to do so probably through this month or till the Lord tells him to go somewhere else. But he's teaching more from the spirit within, okay? I'm going to minister that and teach you some of that because that's part of the Holy Spirit's job. But I'm also going to tell you some, some practical things that you need to know about the third part of the Godhead. Mm -hmm. You know, there they are three distinct parts, God the Father, God the Son, whose name is Jesus, we call him Christ, and God the Holy Spirit. He doesn't have a name like Bob or Jack or Joe. He's called the Holy Spirit. Amen. People would probably receive him better if he was if he was named Bill. And we could say, well, Bill told me, or you know, whatever. And if you were high churched and formal and used the old King James, you could say William told me. But, uh, that's a little humor there, but, uh, very little. But anyway, the whole, the Holy Spirit, and uh, we're calling this 101 because we're going to take some different aspects. These by far, far do not exhaust all the different areas we could talk about about the Holy Spirit. And we can go from there into the point that all of us have had experiences with the Holy Spirit at one time or another. Amen. Whether you believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, have received the infilling of the Holy Spirit, wherever you may be in your walk with the Lord, if you're saved, the Holy, you've had a Holy Spirit encounter. Amen. Amen. And we'll, we'll talk to Amen. you a little bit about that. But what started stirring in my spirit was that... Uh, in Matthew 22, 29, I'm going to be using a lot of scriptures, so it, um, unless you've got quick thumbs, you know, just kind of bear with me. Uh, I may ask Bishop to read. He's my designated reader sometimes. And <clears throat> that 
frog that I didn't eat for breakfast is hopping around down there. <laughs> but anyway, uh, in Matthew 22, 29, Jesus is addressing the religious leaders of that day, the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, all those people. And they confronted him with a question. And he tells them that the reason that they're ignorant, they don't know, is for one of two reasons. And usually it's both. It says, Jesus told the religious leaders, and this is the King James, you are mistaken not knowing the scripture nor the power of God. Well, the power of God is the Holy Spirit. Carry mm -hmm. you here in Jerusalem until you be endued with power. Mm -hmm. yeah. What was that power? It was the Holy Spirit. It's the power of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, there is a version called the J.B. Phillips version uh, that is an old-time message Bible. It was written a lot of years ago, but it's very similar to the message Bible that we read today. But in the J.B. Phillips, it says, you're ignorant of both the scripture and the power of God. Mm -hmm. Well, there's several times in the New Testament that Paul writes to various churches on various occasions, and one of them being about the Holy Spirit, is he said, brother, I don't want you ignorant. Mm -hmm. So I've got to teach you something. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the Message Bible, <coughs> Brother Eugene, he says, uh, you're off base on two counts. You don't know your Bible, and you don't know how God works. Amen. The scripture. Now, I just challenge you, in most every area that you're going to encounter in your lifetime, the answer to whatever you need is found in the Word of God or through the Spirit of God. Amen. 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 And it's usually both working together. Amen. Amen. When Danny knew that the Word of God told him that to find a wife is a good thing, mm -hmm. he knew finding a wife was a good thing. Amen. So he would pursue finding a wife, right? Mm -hmm. And that's in the Scripture. Mm -hmm. It says he who finds a wife finds a good thing and gains favor with God. Mm -hmm. But who is his wife going to be? Well, did you find that in the Scripture? No. no, you had to counsel with the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. or the power of God to get you to that person that he wanted you yoked up with, didn't he, Brother Amen. Dan? Amen. Amen. And did he do that? Yes. Uh -huh. So it's the two not working separate, but working in conjunction with one another mm -hmm. that what we need in our lives mm -hmm. to solve every situation or every problem. Amen. 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 And if you will just ask, Ask God, he'll be glad to reveal it to you. Mm -hmm. James tells us that we have not because we ask not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is it all right? Uh, I'm not going to sweat at the forehead and jump out like, <laughs> like uh, yeah, I, I tore it up, Paul. <laughs> I tore it up. You had it fixed. You had it fixed, Paul. I know you did. But I got to go back to the old school. I got to put it up here. Paul told me to hook it on my chin. <laughs> that didn't work. Y'all hear me all right, right? Yeah. All right. So everything, you can trace its roots back. Every situation, every problem, you can trace its roots back to our ignorance as believers, because we do believe in Jesus, mm -hmm. as to our ignorance in what the Word of God says and what the power of God has to say about it. Amen. 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 And when we're told in Matthew 6, 33, to seek ye, when? First. First, the kingdom of God. What are the boundaries on the kingdom of God? They're the word of God, which never changes. And they're the spirit of God, who leads and guides you into all truth, who shows you things to come, who brings you into remembrance. We'll go into a little bit more of that as we get along in our teaching. So we must know the Holy Ghost and his power in everyday life. Yeah. Now there is an importance in the scripture and you need to read the scripture. Reading the scripture feeds your faith, mm -hmm. feeds your spirit man. You've got to grow in that and that's important and we could spend years talking about that. Mm -hmm. But if you want to know the importance of the word, read Psalm 119 with the instruction 
of the Holy Spirit, and He will quicken to you the importance of His Word in your life. Amen. Amen. But today, we're going to do some teaching, some understanding of the Holy Spirit. Now, to, we're exhorted in 2 Timothy 2.15 to study. Well, what are we supposed to study? The Word, the Word of God. God. Amen. We're also supposed to study the Holy Spirit. But to study the Word of God so that we might be a workman that's not ashamed. And then in Romans 12, 2, it tells us, and I'm going to read this out of the uh, Passion Version. It says, stop imitating the ideas and opinions of the culture around you. But inwardly trans be transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of your thinking. Glory. Now, Romans 12, 2, in a close version of the New King James, says, don't be conformed to the image of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And that's very beneficial in all of us. As we walk out God's plan for our lives, we're going to have to do that. But how many of you know you think differently after you come into the body of Christ or the kingdom of God than you did before? Amen. And how many of you know that your mind still needs some areas in it? Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. And, and Brother Danny has done some excellent teaching about the mind of Christ and renewing your mind and those things. And they're wonderful and we need that. Amen. But we're going to major this morning on a little bit about the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory. Now, many people think that the Holy Ghost showed up 50 days after Jesus' resurrection. That's on the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. Pentecost doesn't mean that they were shouting and running and speaking in tongues. Right. Pentecost means 50. Mm -hmm. Jesus ascended uh, from the grave, spent 40 days here in the earth teaching his disciples. He left and ascended, Acts 1, went into heaven, and 10 days later, 10 and 40 is how much? 50. The day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit fell on the upper room. Mm -hmm. Now it's always amazed me that there were over 500 people, according to Corinthians, that were disciples or followers of Jesus. But how many were in the upper room? 120. 120. That's just about 25%. Right? Yeah. Jesus teaches in the parable of the sower sows the word, found in Mark 4 and other places too, but primarily in Mark 4. He says there's four kinds of soil. That's right. Only one kind produces. Yes. Mm -hmm. What percentage is that? 25%. About 25%. Mm -hmm. So see, even though I'm telling you this morning, it can only be 25% of you that this is going to benefit. Mm -hmm. But the key is, is the determination of that is yours. Yeah. Yeah. Glory. Amen. Amen. You're the one that determines whether your heart is going to be receptive to the seed and allow it to grow and mature and bring forth fruit in your life. Amen. Yes. Not me. Right. I'm share the word. The word is incorruptible seed. It will always accomplish where unto its sin. Amen. But if you're in the heart, then you'll be one of that 25% that will benefit the 30, 60, 100 fold according to your faith. Amen. Amen. So, the Holy Spirit didn't show up on that 50th day of Pentecost. I mean, you know what Genesis 1, 1, 2 says? In the beginning. Well, when was that? In the well, beginning. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> How does the Gospel of John start? In the, In the beginning. beginning. When was that? I don't know. Amen. I can ask, but I still probably wouldn't comprehend it. Yeah. But anyway, in the beginning, it says, talking about this earth as we know it, was without form and void. And really in the old text, it says chaos. There was confusion or nothing put in order. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm not wanting to show hands, but some of y'all left houses this morning. <laughs> Amen. Put in order. Amen. Let me just remind you of something. Jesus left the tomb. You remember he left the tomb last week on resurrection? Mm -hmm. When the women got to the tomb, what did they find, Bishop? An empty tomb. But what else did they find? 
Great His clothes. The great clothes were folded up nicely and laid at the head. Mm -hmm. Jesus made up his bed. <laughs> after he looked, come on now. Before he left. <laughs> come on. Yeah. yeah. We're supposed to be followers of Christ. Uh -huh. Made the bed what before he left. Than you found them. Amen. Amen. Because it wasn't his great clothes. Right. Somebody else could have used them things because he didn't need them. Mm -hmm. Amen. And notice there wasn't an explosion that got him out of the tomb. They gently rolled the stone away so somebody else could use that bar of grave. Right. Amen. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. So sometimes when we think about the miraculous and the power and the dunamis, we think of explosive force. Uh -huh. No. The Holy Ghost always does things decently uh -huh. and in, in order. order. Now, we may not understand his decency and in order, because I don't understand how you can spit mud and make mud and stick it in a blind man's eyes and he goes away seeing. That don't make no sense to nobody physically. Uh -huh. But did it work? Yes. So you know the fruit by the tree. That's right. No, you know the tree by the fruit. The fruit. Yeah, that's right. I got you going in the wrong yeah, direction, right. didn't yeah. So the Holy Spirit was there moving and note that nothing happened until God spoke. Now, what did God speak? It's called W-O-R-D-S. What did God speak? Words. words. So when you have words hooked up with the Holy Ghost, you have the combination for creation. Over in the New Testament, it says that everything that's seen was made from something not seen. Right. Mm -hmm. Everything that, that you're sitting on, drove here on, comes from elements that God created right here in, in these chapters. Yeah. And it's just matriculated through the years and taken different forms. Hallelujah. So then when God made man his highest creation, he he says in Genesis 1, 26 and 27, uh that let us make man in our image. image. Plural. Mm -hmm. So who was that us and our? The Father, God Son, the Father, God the Son, Son, and God the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. And even though we equate our Christian walk with that 33 and a half years that Jesus spent here on the earth that we have recorded and what he did on the cross and everything, several times in the Word of God, it says we were in him before the foundation of the earth. Mm -hmm. It really didn't take place. It just materialized from the cross on. Yeah. Right? Right. right. But it was already a plan in operation a long time ago. Amen. Right? Hallelujah. Then in the Old Testament, we see that the Holy Ghost was relegated because man had become fallen. He had the Holy Ghost. When God breathed breath into Adam, that was the Holy Ghost. That was life breathed, breathed into him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And if you don't think that's so, then go to the 20th chapter of the Gospel of John when Jesus told his disciples, or when Jesus got his disciples saved, it says he breathed on them and they received the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The same thing happened. Jesus was demonstrating from the second Adam. Uh, mm-hmm. What happened to the first Adam? Amen. Yes. Amen. But the the Holy Ghost was relegated to coming up on right. the king, the priest, and the prophet so that they could administer the jobs that God had laid out for those various positions. And again, you could go into teaching after teaching on all these three things and what the Holy Ghost does in them. But one thing that's very interesting to me, and most people don't understand this because they've read right over it, but in Exodus 31, 1 through 11, when uh, Moses is commanded to build God a tabernacle in the wilderness, okay, God sends him special people. It talks about who they are and what tribes they're from. Mm -hmm. But the word says that in verse 7, that they had special works that they could work because the Holy Spirit was in them. Yes. Was in them. Mm -hmm. Not on them, but in them. Mm -hmm. So God had put gifts and callings and anointings in various people 
to do the work with the wood and the gold and silver and the tapestries and all the things because they had the mind of Christ to know what to do so that it would be acceptable to God here on the earth. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Now let me tell you something. It's the same Holy Ghost. Remember over in Romans, it says you have the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead. He dwells in you. Huh? Is that right? And it says he will quicken or bring to life your mortal body. Right? Right. If the Holy Ghost has the ability to bring skilled work, gifts or anointings or whatever, for his pleasure, don't you think he would allow that for you because you're his children? Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. But nobody calls on the Holy Ghost to help them at work. Most of us think we leave him when we leave out of here in the parking lot. No. But he's with you 24-7. Amen. Amen. That's right. And he took up residence in you. But not only is he in you, how many of you know to pinch yourself? Can you pinch yourself? Mm -hmm. Or pinch at yourself? Mm -hmm. Come on, Ms. Walker, pinch yourself. <laughs> Make sure you eat. <laughs> Did you feel it? Uh -huh. So you felt it because you're flesh, right? Yeah. What happened on the day of Pentecost? Mm -hmm. He poured out his spirit on all. all. On how much? All. all. On how much? All. All. On all flesh. Now Jesus explains this when he's explaining the Holy Spirit, and we'll get there in just a minute. Mm -hmm. He says the Spirit will be with you, and the Spirit will be in you. Glory. So there is a Spirit within and a Spirit upon. Mm -hmm. And once he was poured out on that day of Pentecost, he's never been retracted. Right. Amen. Amen. We'll, we might depth that a little bit. Amen. Then in John uh, chapter 14, verses 6, I mean, excuse me, in, uh, in Luke, I got ahead of myself, in Luke, we see the Holy Spirit filling John the Baptist in his mother's womb. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Read that. It says he was filled with the Holy Ghost in his mother's womb. Remember when uh, Mary with Jesus came into the presence, how he leaped because he recognized. Mm -hmm. How did he recognize it? He was inside the mother's womb mm -hmm. by the Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And we know the creation story. Uh, uh, we know the Advent story, how Mary submitted to the Word of God she said, be it done unto me according to thy word. Right, right. The word is seed. The seed went into the woman. The Bible says the Holy Ghost came upon her right. and enshadowed her. And she conceived. And she conceived Emmanuel, God with us, Jesus. Mm -hmm. All God, but all man. Born just like you and I from the womb of a woman. Yeah. Right. Born in the, in the beginning because the woman always breaks water prior to birth. So the initial birth into this earth is born of water. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's what he was talking, Jesus was talking about to Nicodemus. It's not talking about water baptism there. Right. You have a right to be here because you came through the right gate. You came through the womb of a woman. Mm -hmm. And it was water broke forth before you came. Mm -hmm. Now I realize that medically they do cesareans and everything, but still there is water available there. Right. Again, you understand that? Mm -hmm. All right. And then he said you got to be born again, which was the second birth. We know about that. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. In uh, John chapters 14 through 16, Jesus starts giving an explanation of the Holy Spirit. I quicken everybody that is a new or a young believer to read the Gospel of John at least in two or three different versions. Mm -hmm. There are several things that the Gospel of John present that you will not get anywhere else. Number one, it is not the synoptic gospels or the God as, as man with us. It's God as God with us. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Mm -hmm. And then verse 14, that's John 1, 1. And verse 14 says, And the Word became flesh and dwelled among us. Amen. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the Word, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, we got Jesus. He came in the right way. In the 10th chapter of John, he says there's one that didn't come in the right way. He came over the wall. He's talking about Satan. Right. Amen. The thing cometh to kill, save and destroy. 
Amen. But we came in the right way. So these three chapters right here, 14, 15, 16, Jesus starts explaining the Holy Spirit. Number one in John, he teaches about the divine or the God side of him. Right. Amen. Number two, there is more to learn about love in the Gospel of John. Amen. In fact, John records himself in his own book as I am the most beloved disciple. Mm -hmm. Well, if that wasn't a true statement, would the Holy Spirit have put that in the Word? No. no. So evidently it was true. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Now, the other disciples didn't like it, but it was evidently true. Mm -hmm. And because John walked in love, uh, they couldn't kill him. They tried to, they tried to boil him in the oil and all kinds of things. So they said, well, we can't kill him, we'll exile him. We'll put him out here on this island and something will eat him. Well, when he got out there, Jesus appeared to him and he wrote another book. Right. Amen. Amen. Can't keep a good man down. Amen. Glory. John teaches from the aspect of the Father. He teaches more about love. He teaches more about the Holy Spirit. And 108 times in the Gospel of John, he talks about father or family. Amen. Because Jesus' job, one of his jobs, he had many, but one of his assignments was to demonstrate the father to the people. Mm -hmm. And that's why so much is said in there about family and father. Amen. And to know the father. Amen. Then in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20, tells us that our bodies don't belong to us because they've been bought with a price. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. The shed blood of Jesus. But they are the temple of what? The Holy oh, Ghost. Here. So he yeah. dwells in us and we're not our own. Amen. Mm -hmm. You might think you're your own, but you're not. Amen. You belong to God. Amen. He redeemed you. He paid for you. Amen. And he paid for you complete spirit, soul, and body. Then in 2 Corinthians, the 13th chapter and the 14th verse, Paul exhorts the church. He says to continue. Now, he, this is a, an ending uh, to the church at Corinth. He says to continue in the grace, that's the free gift, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Have you experienced that? The grace. Amen. Amen. All of us have. You're yes. Saved. You're yes. saved by grace through faith. Amen. Yeah. The love of God. Have any of you experienced that? Glory. Well, if you hadn't experienced it, it's true, because he loved us before we loved him. Amen. Right. Amen. And finally, he says, and the communion, communion, we're going to receive communion today, but this is an ordinance that the church does. This communion means fellowship or friendship, an intimate friendship of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So you need three things. You need the grace of Jesus. Right. You need the love of the Father. Mm -hmm. And you need the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Dare say a good portion of the Christians meeting right now throughout the world, unless they have the infilling of the Holy Spirit, are void of the communion or fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Oh. Yeah. Amen. And then finally, what's the last book in the Bible? Revelation. Revelation. Generations to Revelations. Revelations. Where is the Holy Spirit in Revelations? Well, in 2217, it says the Spirit and the Bride. Who's the Bride, Chuck? Us. That's us, right? Glory. Where is Bride? That's what it says in Ephesians. Where is Bride? It says the Spirit and the Bride beckon or hearken, come. Talking to Jesus. Say, this is not Jesus talking. This is not the Father talking. This is the Holy Spirit who is in us, and we're the bride, saying, come, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And, you know, some people were saying, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Yes. Amen. Yeah. So he's a person, not a thing, not an it. Amen. Amen. And he's there for our benefit. Amen. Jesus, several times <laughs> in those, uh, in John, talks about he, him. If we don't understand that he's not a force, many churches believe there is a Holy Spirit, but it's just like a 
of, of force or something out right. there. But but they also believe the same thing about the devil. Yeah. And he's a very real entity. Along with the Holy Spirit, he's a very real entity. And we need to refer to him never as an it right. or something inanimate. He is a person right. that you can talk to and listen to and be friends with and commune with. Mm -hmm. But dare say, we may do things to the Father or for the Father or worship and praise the Father. And we do that with Jesus. But we come up short on the Holy Spirit. And he is the third part of the Godhead. His name really is the Holy Spirit of God. So when you neglect that aspect of God, you're neglecting God. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, we don't emphasize one over the other. They're complementary of one another. They all have separate and equal assignments. Amen. Amen. And, and there is order there. It is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. But we need to recognize he is a person, and we need to, to show him uh, that we need him in our everyday life. Not just in our church life or our ministry or whatever, but in our everyday life. Uh, how many of y'all know that there is bedding here in the South? We use quilts and blankets and things, but there is a type of bedding. I'm saying this, ladies, for the men that may not know. There's a type of bedding that you cover your bed with called a comforter. Yeah. Uh, amen. Right? Right. It's a comforter. Amen. Why is it called a comforter? Because it's supposed comfort to, to you. comfort you. Right. But I dare say that if you're having company and you use a comforter or two, you may put a comforter on your bed that is for show and not for use. Right. And that's what the church has done with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And they've taken the comforter and maybe put him on display. But they don't use, use them. them. Now, men, how many of y'all are married? <laughs> Keep your hands up there, because I want I want you to be honest. Roy, raise your hand. You are married. You didn't have to ask her. Hold your hand, <laughs> Carolyn. You are married. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep your hand up, Bishop. You qualify for this because you have been married. If you're not married, Amen. How many of you have gone in the bathroom? Where you normally go, do your thing, get up and wash your hands, and you look over there, and there is some big, fluffy, beautiful towel over there. It says, do not touch. Because Cuffy is coming. Huh? Am I the only one? I mean, we got towels in our closet that I, I know they're in there, but I ain't going to use them. No. Spot on. They're for special occasions. And there's nothing wrong with that, you understand. But that shouldn't be how we take the Holy Spirit. Right. He is there so we can be hands on. Right. So we can enjoy all the blessings and benefits. You understand where I'm coming from? Yeah. Uh -huh. huh? Yep. We, we put him on the shelf. You know, we recognize him. We acknowledge him. We'll pull him out now and then, put him on display, maybe run, dance, shout, do, do some things. But then we hang him back up and go through our everyday life. He's there 24 7, 365. Amen. What are you going to do with him? You and not doing with him is a disservice to yourself because yeah. he's there as a helper. Yeah. Glory. Yeah. Not a do for. Right. Glory. Most people think he's going to do it for you. No, right, it's right. Not. Amen. He is called along beside. That's what paraclete means. He's called along beside to help. Mm -hmm. Help in what? In whatever you need. He's right. a spirit. Glory. God. Right. God knows everything, sees everything, he's all powerful. He's the spirit of God in you and available to you. Right. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. He doesn't lose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, there are eight things that Jesus taught in those scriptures that the Holy Spirit does. And, and I'm going to give you the, the uh, chapter and verse and just give you a little bit of it. Number one, in John 14, 17, John 14, 17, he said, 
He will be with you and dwell in you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So he can be with you and dwell in you. Mm -hmm. See, that's why Jesus said it's more expedient for me to go away because Jesus could be with them, but he couldn't dwell in them that's right. because he took on the form of flesh. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but a spirit can be in, on, about, through. Yeah. yeah. Amen. 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 And you and me, and he can say something to Chuck, and he can say something to Danny, and he can say something to Joe, all different, but all at the same time. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Why? It's a spirit. Because he's individual to all of us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And unique and peculiar to all of us. Not that he is strange. He is not strange. Amen. Many people think he's strange. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, you know, we come out of a mainline denomination, the Methodist Church. Some of y'all came out of Baptist and other places. And they think Pentecostals or Charismatics or whatever they deem us to be, they think we're strange. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Statistically, about one out of every three people is strange. <laughs> so, where you're sitting, I want you to look to your right. Or look close to you on the right. Find somebody. Look to your left. Somebody. Now, I really like it. Because statistically, it says one out of two. One out of two? Yeah. And the Bible says one's a but I like strange company. How about y'all? Amen. 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 Number two, John 14, 26. He teaches us all things. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So who's the teacher? The Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Now, Paul told Timothy to study to show himself approved. Go to school. Educate yourself in whatever area. Mm -hmm. But you do have a teacher on the inside of you. Yeah. Glory. And generally, you don't have the information. And listen, young folks. His name ain't Google. Yeah. Glory! He ain't on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> or whatever other, what are the other search engines that are out there, Damon? There's a, hundreds of them out there. You know, yeah, Explore and, yeah. and Bing and all that. He, he ain't any of them. Yeah. They got an answer for you. Now, let me understand, yeah. leave you to this understanding. Yeah. You can put anything, you get an answer off of there. Mm -hmm. But is it true? Mm -hmm. No. Maybe not. <laughs> no. If it ain't Jesus, it ain't true. Yeah. Glory. Because he said, I am the way, the, the truth, truth, the truth. Yes. Now, there is the way, right? Mm -hmm. So there's only the truth. Uh -huh. Where is that truth? Jesus. Jesus. Uh, That's right. Right? right? So you need to, Mr. Holy Ghost, help me out. Mm -hmm. Instead of doing a lot more consulting to other things. Amen. I guarantee you, if you'll purpose to do that and renew your mind, your grades will go up in school. Glory. Right. Why? Because he knows all things. Right. I Amen. School class. I take these little trivial things that come in on my email. And if I listen to the Holy Ghost, he's right all the time. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I think I know more than he does. <laughs> well, that country couldn't be Spain. <laughs> well, it wasn't. <laughs> well that wasn't in Portugal but it was mm -hmm. and he knew because he knows all things mm -hmm. alright number three there's eight things here uh, he brings us into remembrance of all that Jesus said right. John 14 